Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and we're going to talk about Synology versus TrueNAS. And I've been wanting to do this video, but it's not easy to articulate because it's not an easy decision because it's not like one or the other. One has advantages over the other. We're going to talk about that, but it's not like there's an easy, you know, all this way or all that way. It depends. I know that's the part people hate the answer. They want just a definitive answer. Tell me what to buy. What I want to do is go over the scenarios and the solution you're looking for and help that steer you into what may make you happy and what may be the right fit for you. And of course, because we sell both these products and we deploy both of these products, we're gonna talk about our decision-making process that leads to that. Before we jump all into that, if you could click that like button and first, if you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. Now, don't make the assumption that because I stuck the Synology on top of the FreeNAS that I think it stacks up better. It just so happens the feet fit exactly this size, but the opposite isn't true. So if you were to buy both of these, this fits on top. Um, not ideal though, it's not stable. Anyways, this is a Synology DS1520 Plus, and this is a FreeNAS or TrueNAS Core. I, Mini iX Plus. Now, both of these were sent to me by the respective companies for review. iX Systems sent me this, and of course, Synology sent me this. And I have them both turned on and running because the first thing I want to talk about is, are they quiet? That's one of those debates that come up a lot. And Synology's done a great job across their product line of making relatively quiet products that are in this form factor. And I did review this Synology rack mount stuff. It's a little bit louder, but rack mount stuff generally Noise is less of a concern. We want it to be quieter, but we also want it to be cool and it's gonna be running a long time in a rack. So the fans usually, you know, push a little more air, create a little bit of noise. These are designed possibly to sit next to you. And with FreeNAS, TrueNAS, because you can build your own or get a turnkey product, uh, the one that they make these mini series, which I really like, uh, offer turnkey and quiet solutions. And then, like I said, the disk station series, these smaller ones like this are also quiet. And it's a kind of across their product line. Now, the nice thing about TrueNAS though is because you can build it yourself and that would be a very distinct difference between Synology. I'm not going to address Xpenology. It is essentially a kind of a fork, but it's not officially supported. It's 100% community supported. Great if you're a home user and want to tinker with it uh, so you can build on your own hardware. We're going to stick specifically with the supported DSM because I'm assuming a little bit more, maybe small business and other use cases. Home lab people, well, that's just having fun and not something I would you know, deploy commercially. Uh, so I'm not going to address that. And we're going to keep this focused on Synology and TrueNAS because they're both solutions we deploy. They're both solutions we use. And I think that's a very important aspect to think about because um, a lot of people just regurgitate information off of spec sheets. Uh, I'm going to talk about real world deployments. I have not used many of the other ones out there. So if you have your favorite NAS system, which seems to come up all the time, hey, Tom, please review this. Well, I don't use it unless I actually plan to deploy it. I'm not as likely to do a review on it. So my experience is a lot of what this is going to be calling from. We've sold a lot of the iX systems and we've done everything from the high-end enterprise as in $50,000 plus servers with high availability that we have sold to large companies in the enterprise market. You know, of course, you've seen some of the reviews if you've uh, spent some time in this channel, but you can find them for the TrueNAS, you know, built, purpose-built hardware for the enterprise, which is awesome. But this is the same software you can download and build yourself a small NAS box. Or if you're going, I don't feel like building something, I want something that I know works, that's what true NAS mini iX sells is this right here now same with Synology we've put a lot of these in small businesses we've used a lot of them for the surveillance station we've had these out in the field for a while we've been selling deploying using so all of my experience on both of these is at different levels of usage and of course internally we use uh, free NAS for well this video is being edited on a free NAS server so I have a lot of experience using these so that's where my review is going to come from now let's break down the comparison 
I'll leave a link to this Google Sheet I put together, but this is a one-to-one -one kind of objective comparison. I wanted to start there. There's always a subjective, I just like something better, and I try to keep that bias out at least here in the beginning. There is, of course, some importance to that bias because maybe you like how much easier it is to set up something, but even easy to set up is a real subjective. Easy to you, but maybe not easy to someone else. So let's start right here and start with the file system. I think this is really important when you talk about NAS. You're talking about the security and integrity of your files. And Synology's taken the approach of building it on the MDADM RAID system, because it's a Linux-based system, with ButterFS. Now there's some contention you'll find if you read about ButterFS handling hard drives and some issues. This is why Synology just went with MDADM RAID, ButterFS, and EXT4. So they have a combination of things that they can do to take advantage of and keep it efficient and keep it good. They also have bit wrap protection, et cetera, et cetera. So they've put this together and it's, you know, we've find it very stable. I haven't really had problems with their file system or losses on there. But NAS is not a backup just because you have a bunch of drives, you should always be backing this up. And that's even true with ZFS. But ZFS is next level. And I've heard it referred to many times as the billion dollar file system. That is because of the amount of time, research, and development over the years that has gone into ZFS. And it is an outstanding file system for absolutely massive scalable storage. So ZFS, uh, hands down one of the you know really advanced file systems out there when it comes to what they refer to as copy on right now butterfs btrfs is misspelled right here but also copy on right so that is also a feature of it but zfs much more advanced does it really, really well. And also with the upcoming TrueNAS 12 release, they've added features uh, such as the fusion pools. And it's a really interesting enhancement that they've brought to the table with ZFS. So it's, it's a lot of power in ZFS and I can't say enough good things about it. And it's one of the reasons it's so popular and a lot of people sing praises about it. Now, open source is a big factor. So if you're into the open source ecosystem like I am and essentially an open source enthusiast like I refer to myself. I'm even though Synology is built on Linux, it's not a fully open source system. And this is common. A lot of companies use the Linux space and add some of their own code to it. So you don't you can't just go grab the Synology with the exception of what I said about Exponology, but that's still a fork and not fully supported, etc. But yeah, it's not fully open source. True NAS Core, on the other hand, fully open source. And this is why True NAS and IX systems say, well, Free NAS and True NAS are the largest open source project when it comes to storage because they aren't kind of sort of open source, they are open source. And uh, it's fully open source with BSD based with TrueNAS. And I will mention, cause I've done a video on it, but it's you know future release is gonna be TrueNAS scale, which is gonna be Linux based. Still all the great ZFS features, but a lot of people you know really like the options you may get and enhancements that may come with a Linux based system. So TrueNAS scale, same thing, open source and going to be based on Linux, but we're going to talk today about TrueNAS Core because it's available today on these systems, even though it's in beta, depending on when you're watching this, what level of beta, and that's going to be all BSD based. Expandable RAID. Now, this is one of those yes, but type answers. So yes, for models that support SHR Synology hybrid RAID. So you can grab your pile of drives and throw them in there and have expansion going on, and it will, any intelligent way, handle it. You can expand TrueNAS, but the VDEVs have to match. So I've got a separate video where I get more in depth on that. So no, you can't just grab random drives. There is a methodology where you have to pair up the VDEVs in a similar way. They don't have to be exactly the same drives. They can be different sizes, but the pools themselves have to be containing the VDEVs and it'll get complicated if I keep going on. So I'll leave a link to that video. So yes, but is the answer on there. Uh, which is, you know, I think it's important. And if you want something that is a little bit easier, well, it sees from a, um, back to that subjective versus objective. Yeah, we're going to say it's just easier to do it in Synology. Um, but uh, part of the thing with ZFS is a little bit more rigid and the way it works, but that's also what gives it some of that resilience it has for protecting your data. Plugins, Synology and community supported, uh, IX systems and community. So we do have um, the Synology based plugins on there. And it comes down to if you have a plugin that is really specific to what you're looking for, um, and it's only available on one of these platforms, that may be one of those deciding factors that you've made your decision on. And 
We'll get to that a little bit more at the bottom, but that is obviously a factor. But the fact is, uh, you have a lot of flexibility with both of these because you can run some other things on them, especially if it has Docker support, which we'll talk about later. Virtual machine storage support as a target. So NFS and iSCSI are supported on both of these. Uh, so you can configure that and set that up. Uh, snapshot replication, yes via ButterFS and yes via ZFS. Now, this is a feature of both of these file systems where you can create, you know, essentially snapshots to protect yourself against uh, maybe something that catastrophically destroys data because you have a share and, you know, ransomware being popular here in 2020. If something happens, you can just roll back to that snapshot or because you want to replicate it. Now, snapshots create points in time at which you can replicate at essentially a block level. ZFS replication, I've done videos on this, extremely powerful, extremely fast, um, and it's based off of those snapshots that can be replicated to duplicate your data somewhere else. And that feature based on ButterFS is available in Synology. S3 target support, uh, maybe not everyone's looking for this, but I think it's interesting that it's natively built into the JUNAS system, which essentially means it can act as an S3 server. I did a little searching. I didn't find natively a way to do it on Synology. I did find people who had write-ups on uh, doing it, but I didn't see native support for S3. It's kind of an edge case. It may not be a deciding factor, but at least I'll mention it that it's built in there. R-Sync. Now they both support R-Sync. I find the R-Sync in Synology to be a little bit trickier to use. Um, and I say that because I, it was easy to take two Synologies and have them R-Sync to each other. That part, really simple. Uh, having it talk to other devices, less simple. Uh, TrueNAS Core implements standard R-Sync, so whether you're pushing or pulling data from R-Sync or want to set up an R-Sync port or R-Sync over SSH, they just made it really simple to do in uh, the true NAS system, free NAS system, however you want to look at it. Um, it's been in there for a long time and it's standards based R-Sync uh, over standard ports and also standard ways to do it. So I've used this quite a bit on true NAS when we have people who want to synchronize with different devices. As long as those other devices, whether they be a standalone device or another NAS, as long as standards implemented, R-Sync support is there in either the NAS or of course easy from the command line, um, no problem syncing with this. And a lot of people have a lot of custom solutions based on R-Sync, so having that just as a built-in support is really nice to the web interface. Containerization. Uh, Docker is on supported models of Synology. TrueNAS Core uses BSD and IOKH jails. Now, when TrueNAS scale comes out, that's going to be Docker based. Once again, that's a future release, but hey, it's something that is out there that's available. So I thought I'd mention that, you know, in the future, that'll be something else. And I also bring up TrueNAS scale every now and then because it runs essentially on the same hardware. So if you ever wanted to switch between them, your ZFS pool should import fine and you'd be able to switch between them. But you're, if you have built things on containerization because it's a different platform, well, you'll have to rebuild all your plugins. Windows file sharing. Seems obvious, but yes, they fully support it. Manage users and permissions through the interface. Yes, there's a user manager in both of these, so I'm not talking about Active Directory, but just generally installing this and saying, let's add some users, let's build some permissions. They both have ACL, Access Control List Management, so you can assign users and permissions. Uh, that is fully supported on both of these devices. So yeah, if you just want to use a Windows file server or in a Windows network, it works. And if you're in a small business office and you go, hey, I like Active Directory integration, yes, we have that in both devices where we can tie it to Active Directory. So Active Directory can just understand this device and can control the permissions on it. AD server replacement. Now, while this is supported in Synology, it's not like a drop-in automatically. Every feature in AD is there, but it does have basic AD support, so it can kind of act as an Active Directory server inside your network. That is not a feature currently supported in TrueNAS. I don't know if it will come in there or not, but I've always had mixed feelings about this because it's not full AD, and sometimes you can have some quirkiness with it, but for you know small office or a home user, it probably will work fine. Um, it all depends on what use cases you have for it. Surveillance software is something I've talked a lot about with Synology. We have Surveillance Station, requires licenses. And uh, you get the first two for free, or if you buy the NVMe models, they come with a couple more, but um, I've done whole videos on this. I really like it. People ask me a lot about doing this on TrueNAS. There is a community supported plugin. I don't feel it's very well developed. It's not something I've ever used in the enterprise. I've looked at it, it seems, well, I can only say kind of basic and not well developed. That's the only way I can really describe that. It's not something that I would say is turnkey. Oh yeah, it's an awesome drop-in replacement. Um, they have it, it's there, so I'm not gonna dwell on that much. It's not something I would I've used or recommended for business. Backup software. 
Active Backup is really cool. Um, I gotta admit that's a great Synology supported tool. I've done videos on how this integrates for backing up Windows computers, Windows servers, how it can back up things like Office 365 and G Suite. There's like a whole suite of software supported by Synology that comes with these devices and it doesn't have any licenses with it. It's part of when you buy Synologies that support the active backup. Back to, it has to be a device that supports it. Um, as of right now, it seems like a lot of them do, but once again, when you're choosing your NAS, that's something you have to think about. Community and third-party support. Yes, there's actually a lot of different plugins you can get and some of our community or third-party plugins that are on there that may have other advanced features, but there's nothing native supported by Attic Systems. It's like an automatic turnkey um, management tool that's like active backup. So if you came here looking for uh, active backup and that's what you want, then these are one of those times when we're gonna go back to why we deploy Synology, that active backup is a big one. Now back to that open source conversation. Now, because you know, we, just because we chose these IX systems, Mini X Plus is because what I have, but I can really load free NAS, true NAS anywhere I want. I can grab the code, I can do it. And if IX systems decided, seems unlikely, to stop releasing the code or anything like that, someone would just fork it and move on. Matter of fact, there are forks already of that particular software uh, and deviations, but I don't see that ever changing. It's 100% your software open source that you do what you want with. And that's a big factor I really like. Synology, the device talks to Synology to get all the plugins, to get the software set up. If Synology says, you know what, I don't want to support it. Like I said, I'm not saying this is likely, but this is a factor. If Synology says, mm, you were going to expire and uh, stop supporting and stop having updates for these models. That's their choice to do so, and that's it. That's where the support will end. If they decide to drop something out of their plugins and the way they give, deliver them through their system and locked in, then that's it. That's Synology's choice to do so. Because some of this is closed source, there's not any easy ways to update this. Not that it's a real likely factor, but it's something that may play into it. It doesn't stop us from deploying these because it just you know, Synology makes a good product, especially when you're using things like the Office 365 backup. If that's one of the solutions, this one of the times we're going to deploy it. If they want that active backup, a small office contacts us and say, hey, we need something to uh, back up our workstations. We don't want to buy some other type of service. Well, then this is something that they're absolutely going to love where they can drop this in. It's pretty turnkey. It gives you a nice management web interface. And a lot of internal IT departments uh, do like these Synologies. They can set a couple of these up and have easy local backups. Now, cloud backups are awesome, and both of these do support once you get the data here, putting it in the cloud. Synology goes a step further and offers some of their own storage solutions, and, you know, kind of a nice feature that they do that versus, um, and they have not lock-in because you can use other ones, but, you know, it's a nice turnkey system, and versus IX system, still really nice. We use Backblaze to back these up, and that's in our solution that works. Now, let's talk a little bit about the interfaces. The Synology DSM interface very much has a desktop UI look and feel with the control panel and just these simple things. Oh, look, here's my users I can create. And uh, click this little button at the top here. There's my iSCSI manager. I can go to the file station. We can look at shares we have. Uh, package center, and we can load things like Plex and all these different plugins. They have a nice plugins, a lot of support, a lot of different stuff that's supported in here. I really like the extensiveness of the plugins, the ease of use, so to speak, of just pulling them in there and away you go. Now you still have to do some mapping and drop some permissions in there and connect your Plex server to wherever your storage is. And I, you know, I gotta admit, I really like this interface. It's pretty intuitive, easy to use. This, though, is something I feel very at home in as well. And this is where things get more subjective. I like the interface a lot for TrueNAS. I find it very robust. It gives me deep levels of access to tuning and setting things up. So when you talk about something like iSCSI, you have some advanced options in here, but you get a lot of very fine tuning options. That may be very daunting, and this may be the first problem you have going, this is a bit much, this is not my space, I want something very simple and turnkey. Synology goes a little bit more on the simple side. FreeNAS, I think it's relatively easy to use, especially you know after you take a little time, and I've done plenty of tutorials on this, um, but yeah, it's going to be a little bit more complex. They do have plugin support here, so you can still look up plugins from IX Systems or Community. They have them broke down here. You can click the install. We have Plex server already loaded on here just as a quick test to test something on here. And not a problem to install, but it's a little bit different. Same with the ACLs and permissions. The uh, When you design the pools, go to storage, pools, 
And if we look at, go here, edit ACLs, this may seem a little bit more complicated than the way you do that over in Synology with the file station and the way you do the permissions. So there's, like I said, if you figure it out, it seems easy, but if they're first timer, yeah, Synology might be a little bit easier. I at least wanted to uh, give them a fair shake on that. So I don't know if this really helps you in which one to choose, but I've now laid out a few of these use cases. Like I said, we deploy both. The nice thing that amazes me about the TrueNAS is you can download for free something that I've deployed and set up in large scale enterprise environments on rack servers that cost 50 plus thousand dollars. Um, and that's your still your systems right here, the same software that's scalable. Now Synology, we've played with some of the larger Synologies. We've never deployed them. Uh, our use case has mostly been targeted at these small businesses and small offices and especially love the surveillance station. So hopefully this kind of gives you some ideas of which one to get. I think the TrueNAS line being fully open source fits well with my open source enthusiasm. And of course my love to tinker with things because I can just create all the jails I want and very custom create all kinds of different software on there, uh, set this up as different targets or things versus the uh, Synology for small business going, you know what? I just need something simple turnkey. I need some backups. Um, I'd like it to run a couple of the cameras in my office and some files. Can you do that? Yes, Synology is kind of turnkey for that, makes it really simple. So if you're the more enthusiast type and love all the knobs being available to you to twist and turn and really customize with a very flexible and big community support, free NAS. If you're going, I just want turnkey and I like that uh, UI that kind of feels like a desktop interface. Synology's got you covered there and you know the surveillance station, granted it does take licenses, but hey, that's kind of a cool feature along with uh, some basic file permissions for some sharing and maybe you want to replicate this to another Synology or use that active backup or you want to back up your Office 365 and G Suite. I've done a video on that and that's a cool feature that comes with a lot of these models of Synology. You're kind of locked into the way they design things, but they do a reliable job. Um, but I will mention that like hardware wise, if you build it yourself, Synology kind of gets ruled out. So if you are a tinker or a home lab, you want to really dive deep into it, the nuts and bolts of building it, well, then you're going to go back over to your free NAS again and go, I want to build it myself with the free NAS, true NAS line, uh, fully open source, because I like to customize everything. I don't want something talking to some proprietary servers. I'm going to lock it down and do that. You can do that. There's no license or activation on these servers at all. Uh, some of the Synology software does require levels of activation to get it set up. Um, not that that's the same as a license, but that's a way they, you know, have control over it. So you know, just some thoughts and throwing them out there on, you know, final thoughts on this. But they're both good products. They're both very reliable. That much I will say for them. And uh, whichever one you choose, I think you'll be happy with it. Just, you know, look at the choices, look at the options and decide which one works for you. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.